Robert Edward Crane, born July 13, 1928, passed away June 29, 1978. Crane was born in Waterbury, Connecticut, and spent his childhood and teenage years in Stamford. He was an American actor, drummer, radio host, and disc jockey known for starring in the CBS situation comedy Hogan's Heroes. A drummer from age 11, Crane began his career as a radio personality, first in New York City and then Connecticut before moving to Los Angeles, where he hosted the number one rated morning show. In the early 1960s, he moved into acting and eventually landed in the lead role as Colonel Robert Hogan in Hogan's Heroes. The series aired from 1965 to 1971, and Crane received two Emmy Award nominations for his work on the series. In 1949, Crane married his high school sweetheart, Anne. They had three children, Robert David, Deborah Ann, and Karen Leslie. After divorcing Anne, he married Sigrid Valdez, became Crane's second wife in 1970. The couple had two children, Scott and Anne Marie. After Hogan Heroes ended, Crane's career declined. He became frustrated with the few roles he was being offered and began performing in dinner theater. In 1975, he returned to television in the NBC series, The Bob Crane Show. The series received poor reviews and it was canceled after only 13 weeks. Afterward, Crane returned to performing in dinner theaters and appeared in occasional guest spots on television. Crane frequently videotaped and photographed his sexual escapades. During the run of Hogan's Heroes, Richard Dawson introduced Crane to John Henry Carpenter, a regional sales manager for Sony Electronics, who often held his, helped his famous clients with their video equipment. The two men struck up a friendship and began going to the bars together. Crane attracted many women due to his celebrity status and introduced Carpenter to them as his manager. Later, Crane and Carpenter would videotape their joint sexual encounters. While Crane's son, Robert, later insisted that all the women were aware of the videotaping and consented to it, some, according to one source, had no idea that they had been recorded until informed by Scottsdale police after Crane's death. In June 1978, Crane was living in the Winfield Place apartments in Scottsdale, Arizona, during a run of beginner's luck at the Windmill Theater. On the afternoon of June 29th, Crane's co-star, Victoria Ann Berry, entered his apartment after he failed to show up for a lunch meeting and discovered his body. Crane had been bludgeoned to death with a weapon that was never identified, though investigators believed it to be a camera tripod. An electrical cord had been tied around his neck. The Scottsdale Police Department, small in size at the time, had no homicide division and was ill-equipped to handle such a high-profile murder investigation. The crime scene yielded few clues, no evidence of forced entry, was found and nothing of financial value was missing. Detectives examined Crane's extensive videotape collection, which led them to John Henry Carpenter, who had flown to Phoenix on June 25th to spend a few days with Crane. Carpenter's rental car was impounded and searched. Several blood smears were found that matched Crane's blood type. No one else known to have been in the car, including Carpenter, tested for that type. DNA testing was not available yet. With no other significant material evidence, the Maricopa County attorney declined to file charges. In 1990, Scottsdale Police Detective Barry Watzel and Maricopa County Attorney's Office re-examined the evidence from 1978 and persuaded the county attorney to reopen the case. Although DNS te DNA testing of the blood found in Carpenter's rental car was inconclusive. Rains discovered an evidence photograph of the car's interior that appeared to show a piece of the brain tissue. An actual tissue sample recovered from the car had been lost, but an Arizona judge ruled that the new evidence was admissible. In June 1992, Carpenter was arrested and charged with Rains' murder.
Carpenter was acquitted. He continued to maintain his innocence until his death four, four years later in 1998. Crane's funeral was on July 5th, 1978 and was held at St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church in Westwood.